Oh, wow. Am I excited today? I was going to wait and make my second video on how to build a journal and go through the, uh, you know, uh, Think and Grow Rich and the other book the, uh, by John Rohn to do the, uh, you know, do my journal. But I decided to do a second video today. I got a great true story for you here in just a second about somebody. But look what Mr. Postman brought me today. Uh, this is the book. I talked about it in my first video. They say, you know, uh, Henry Ford said, you know, God, don't give him all the secrets, you know, Napoleon. He's, what the hell are you doing? And Carnegie said, well, I want him to have it. But several people say, this book is the key. So this is what showed up today, and I'm going to read it. But this Vic Johnson guy says that he'll tell you what the key is, and a lot of people say that this book is the deal. And all this stuff you see on YouTube, all the videos and everything, it's all just a, all this self-help stuff and business sense. A lot of it's just regurgitation of Napoleon's principles. And uh, so just keep that in mind. But this book is supposed to be the key. It's supposed to be the real deal. And I um, can't wait to get started. I didn't realize uh, it's not the, you know, the richest guy in Babylon. This is a, a short book. This is a novel. Oh, my God. Anyway, I'll let you know what it's like. It's got the 15 principles of winning uh, motiv motivational uh, champion of all time. Okay? The Law of Success by Napoleon Hill. I can't wait to get started. Wow, it's just awesome. But real quick, I've got a good true story for you. I thought I'd go over something real quick. Every video, the third video, I'm going to do, we're going to do the journal together. How to build one, okay? Because I don't know. I've been watching it. We'll go over the, how I thought I'd go about it, you know. But anyway, I wanted to go over this triangle again. I watched the Vic Johnson thing again today, okay? And Vic's got the key. He says what the book, you know, Think and Grow uh, Rich and John Rohn and what's important is how do you get that white hot desire? You know, they talk about it, Napoleon talks about it, where the white hot desire is, uh, you know, that's when the coals are burning hot because, you know, Carnegie was a steel man. And how do you get that? And I'm thinking, why? Well, you know, I'm not, a, don't get very motivated too much, you know. But anyway, the idea is, is that if you get a little bit of desire, and watch my first video about this, but uh, watch the Vic Johnson video. He explains it better, but if you get a little bit of desire, a little faith or belief, do a little action. Get the Richest Guy in Babylon book. It takes 20 minutes to read. It's so simple. And I thought, God, i got to at least be able to do that. You know, John Rohn said he'd gone to a, 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 a company twice. He said, hey, you all, you were here last year. How come only 5% of you bought the book, the, the Richest Man in Babylon? So why haven't you bought it? If you've watched the video already, go buy the damn book. But the point is, is get a little bit of desire. Don't have a white hot. It's that's almost, I don't know, I'm not that kind of guy. But according to Vic Johnson, and I tell you what, he's right. You get the desire, a little bit of faith, get a little bit of action, and it's this action. That's what builds more desire. And it's just a round and round thing. And if you just do something, just get going on a little bit of action, it'll build more desire, and you'll go around and around, and you'll do it. So just keep that in mind. But here's the true story I want to go with. I already did a video once, and right towards it, it crashed out. So I guess it'll be a little quicker, because everything's all written out already. That's great. Well, I know this guy, all right, 18 years old, uh, 1980 to 81, heads out to California, buys a house for 107000 all right? Sells it three or four years later for uh, 140 k In the meantime, it's a couple years into it. It also bought the house behind him, uh, I think 114 k I can't remember. Sold it for 145 k They're both, at this time right now, minimum 700000 Easily sell for 800000 each. Okay? Around this time, about 1986, buys a triplex a uh, half mile from the beach, Huntington Beach, California. Build a three-story on top. You could see the water. Uh, right now, it'd be worth three or four million. Bought it for one hundred eighty-five thousand. This guy, twenty-two months later, sells it for three hundred and seventy. Okay, hell of a chunk of cash for a young man like that to have, right? Uh, then he he told me that after thinking about it, he told me that he thought everything he touched was going to turn to gold. You know, so what he did was he this same people that were advising him, not reading any books not going into anything, uh, not, not having any type of journal, not having any goal setting, just kind of a hustler, you know? And, uh, you know, good environment at the time. Anyway, 
listen to this person and these people, goes, buys a restaurant on the beach for 30K, all right? Has to close it in two years since he, one thing that that Phil guy, you know, the real estate guy there on YouTube, the wound up guy has a number one real estate channel, Pukowski or some Polish thing or something, but he's really, really good. I really like him. He says, you know, be careful what you get. Make sure you know the deal. And they all say this. Don't get into some business you don't know. If you don't understand the deal, don't do it. What in the world did I need to be going into the damn restaurant business for? You know, if you think about it, I might have doubled, person might have doubled their money in 22 months, but think about it. You know, it's worth three or four million right now. If you, like Kiyosaki says, you know, he, he believes buying and holding. He talks about the condo he bought in Maui. It's just worth the same kind of deal, worth a million, you know. Bought it for 25000 but you sold it too early. Okay, goes in a restaurant business, closes that restaurant, takes the restaurant, 1989, cashes in his uh, last little nest egg of 24000 in Coke coal stock. Right now, would be worth $3 million to $4 million. Opens up another restaurant, okay. Has that for five or six years. People quit paying the loan on it after he sold it. Kind of lost all that money. Lost that money there. Lost this money here. Okay. Uh, decided to go back to work in the factories at uh, fifteen to eighteen dollars an hour, working crazy hours, seventy to eighty, sometimes one hundred ninety hours a week, making seventy four k a week, but no time for nothing else. Uh, this this person decides to get their GED. Decides to go to school at night, take a few classes, gets a job that'll make 130 to 140,000 a year. One year made 150,000 a year. And this company has a 98% fail rate on the testing. So the person got a tutor, studied, and it's got a pretty good job right now, right? And then in uh, <coughs> 2000, about 2005, person keeps this job, come down to here. Uh, buys a uh, nice condominium, Breckenridge, Colorado, for two hundred and ten thousand. All right. Uh, five years later, sells it for three hundred and seventy. I think three hundred seventy-five actually. Three hundred seventy-five thousand. Uh, had a partner. Had reasons. Needed to sell it. Uh, he felt anyway. It'd be worth probably eight hundred thousand now if it was kept maintained. Basically, short-term rentals paid for itself when hustled properly and did real well. Okay, now we fast forward to 2014, take some of these profits from here, buys four or five rental properties. They all cash flow or break even pretty well. Uh, this person, if you haven't figured it out by now, I'm talking about myself, okay? All right, so some of the main principles here I really wanted to point out that if a person like Kiyosai says, hold on to your properties, because who would have ever thought that that stuff would be worth that kind of money? Who would have ever thought that Coca-Cola stock could be worth that kind of money? And what? To sell it to get into a business that I wasn't familiar with, which is real bad advice. But, you know, there's deals out there and you can do them, but you just have to get aggressive. But anyway, you take this money, you buy four or five rental houses, still have those properties. They got real good equity on them. They're breaking even. Make a little money. There's no problem. Uh, good college town here. You know, get plenty of students, got cash. Uh, made a little mistake here. Found a deal on some commercial property, but you know, uh, it might be worth you know 50k. Another one might be worth 50k, but they're not rented out, and been paying on them for 10 years, eight eight to 10 years, 1,100 dollars a month, okay. And like uh, Kiyosaki says, you know, far as the money goes, if if. <laughs> Whether you think you got equity and you might be able to sell that someday for some money or get it rented out, I got to focus on that and get goals on that. And that's going to be one of my big goals because, as Kiyosaki says, if your house, you know, buy a house, buy a house, you know, it's an asset. It's not an asset, okay? If there's anything taking money out of your pocket every month, whether it's a car payment, a house payment, taxes, insurance, anything, if it's taking money out of your pocket, it's a liability, period. Now, I understand you have to have some liabilities. But this here is unacceptable situation. Ha paying $1,100 a month. You know, oh, this one here just a couple years, but this one on, on 10 years, $500 and some a month. Uh, they're about paid off, you know. But 
I need to uh, sell them, do something, because I've been paying just a liability at this point. Keep in mind, I did have one about 2015. Uh, ran across a deal I really did want to do, but uh, a friend of mine wanted to do it. So I went out there and looked at it. Uh, had it listed. It was a, a lumber yard, five buildings and a house. A lady paying rent in the house. The whole block, the block square block downtown in a small little town out in the middle of nowhere. But uh, they wanted 114000 a year before. Make long story short, bought it for 35000 Okay, sold it for eighty k about 24 months later. It was paying for itself. Maybe should have hung on to it too with some of these scenarios. But did okay there. Had some cash, paid a few things off. But I just wanted to say the main point here was is that holding on to property would be a good thing. Holding on to some of your assets on your stock, you know. I'm sure Warren Buffett would say I should have hung on to that. <laughs> and uh, just wanted to point, point some of that stuff out. Uh, I still make plenty of money. I still got a great job. I have rental property. I have things that work well for me. But now I'm going to start a business next year, another business, and I want to do it better and that's why I started watching the YouTube videos and reading all the books and I'm going to build my library. I'm going to study success. I'm going to study wealth. I'm going to do a journal. I'm going to set goals and I'm going to do a plan and we can work through it together. I just thought I'd run through this little crazy story of mine so you can see that I have had some successes and done some pretty stupid things by you know getting into situations I didn't understand and just thought everything that I touched you know, it's easy to get that idea when you're that young that that everything you touch is going to turn to gold. Well, you know, that's not the damn case. So if you're if, 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 if you're 28 years old and you got over 100 grand cash in the bank and still living large, you need to you need to, uh, you know, be careful. You need to hang on to your money and, and, and work wisely. You know, anyway, just thought I'd pass that on tonight. And uh, remember to study your triangle. OK, we'll do the journal and. Uh, goal setting here on the next video. Thank you very much for your time.